Just said I wasn't going to tell anybody, but I could keep it to myself. No, I could keep it to myself. No, I could keep it to myself. I said I wasn't going to tell anybody, but I could keep it to myself. What the Lord has done for me. Said soon and very soon. Soon and very soon. Said soon and very soon. Soon and very soon. We are going to see the Let your voice sing. Soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. Soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. Hallelujah. No more crying there, we are going to see the king. No more crying there, we are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the king. No more dying there, we are going to see the king. No more dying there, we are going to see the king. No more dying there, we are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Lift your voice and sing. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. Hallelujah, 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 we're going to see the King. Lift 
church. We are so glad you're joining us again for New Hope at Home. We hope you're at home safe and warm and cozied up on the couch for a time of fellowship, connection, and community. We're continuing our series, Out of Many, One, Unity in the Body of Christ this week, and Mark Roof, our pulpit minister, is back to deliver that message. Also, I want you to be on the lookout. We've got a new initiative coming out are called New Hope at Home Boxes, and those are going to be ready for you at the end of this month uh, in preparation for our new series next month called Broken as we prepare uh, for Easter. But inside those boxes, you'll find sermon outlines, communion stuff, stuff for your children and your youth, um, all sorts of different things, reading lists, playlists, things just to keep you engaged, small group discussion questions and things like that. So we're hoping you'll use these boxes at home if you're choosing to stay at home and maybe even give one to a neighbor so they can engage with us here at New Hope. We love you. We're thinking about you. Let's worship together. I raise a hallelujah.
gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is alive. And I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder. You're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is alive. I raise a hallelujah. Good morning, New Hope. I hope you're warm and well this morning. We are two weeks away from Mission Sunday, the one day a year that we raise funds to support our mission points. This year, we are aiming to raise $150,000 to support our mission efforts around the world. We have been highlighting our different mission points the last few weeks. Two weeks ago, you heard from Paul and Drew Whitmire from Crossing Crown Missions here in Oklahoma City. Last week, you heard from Amanda Madrid of Predizan. This week, we are highlighting Pedro and Luisa Andrade in the Venezuelan churches. Venezuela is by far the biggest effort that we support. We put more money into the Venezuelan mission than any other. New Hope is the sole supporter of the Andrade family, and I believe that we more than get our money's worth. As I'm sure you're aware, Venezuela has struggled economically for many years. The situation there has been dire for a long time. Yet, even in their suffering, our brothers and sisters have continued to share the love of Christ with their countrymen and worship God regardless of their circumstances. I believe that we all have something to learn from their resilience. The Andrades routinely send us photographs of new converts being baptized and our brothers and sisters getting together to worship. Pedro and Luisa have founded many churches around the Merida and Punta Fio areas. And recently, they sent us a letter about the situations of those churches. Uh, I believe the letter, which we will make available to you for you to read yourself, details how the Venezuelans have made the best of a very bad situation. I ask you to please be in constant prayer for our Venezuelan brothers and sisters. They continue to desperately need our prayers and to desperately need our support. So now you've heard about all of our current mission points, Cross and Crown, Predizan, and Venezuela. Next week, if you tune in, you're going to hear as much as we can tell you about a new and top secret effort that we have the opportunity to join in. 
Um, we are not going to be able to tell you a lot of things about it because of um, circumstances surrounding the mission, but New Hope has an opportunity to support people who are going to be doing a work in a part of the world that has not been traditionally served by missionaries. Um, and these people are people that many of you might, in fact, know um, and be close to. So I hope that you'll tune in next week for that. Hola. Hi. Hola, hermana. ¿Cómo están? Queremos dar un saludo desde Venezuela y agradecerles. Queremos hacerlo en español para poder transmitir lo que sentimos. Y en verdad sentimos muchísimo agradecimiento. Aquí en Venezuela no es fácil todo, pero es muy agradable trabajar para Dios y por la ayuda que ustedes nos prestan. Quiero que Luisa les diga algo porque siempre soy yo el que habla. Y lo más que quiero decirles, los amamos mucho y les agradezco mucho la confianza que han tenido en mí para sostenerme como misionero. Y ahí le van los reportes y las fotos. Esperamos que todo marche bien y lo puedan disfrutar. Muchísimas gracias por todo su amor, su bendición y todas sus ayudas económicas. Han sido de gran bendición en cada momento que lo hemos podido utilizar. Nuestro apoyo, nuestro sueldo, depende de muchísimas personas y para nosotros ha sido una bendición poder compartirlo. Les amamos, les agradecemos y oramos constantemente por ustedes. We believe in God the Father. Disciples. Disciples. But also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. I pray that they will all be one just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, and I am in you. Oh, um, that's upside down. I know. And may they be in us so that they the world will 
belief that you sent me. John seventeen twenty one. N L T. Bye, New Hope. church family, and everyone that's tuned in this morning. It is so good to be back with you. I've been in Nashville over the past few weeks. As some of you may know, my dad is in hospice care, and it's been a, a tough situation, and I'm, I'm so appreciative of the ability to be here and be with them. But despite being here, we're still all one body. We're still united in Christ. I'm still encouraged and able to say with absolute confidence that this is the day the Lord's made. And I'll rejoice and be glad in it. Because saying that is not based on circumstances. And some of you may be going through some difficult circumstances right now. And the thing that gets you through is the thing that unites us. And I want to talk about that this morning. We're talking about out of many, one and I chose this series, and Cleet, thank you for covering the last few weeks and bringing us, we're in week three now. I chose this series because I wanted us to focus on unity as we focused on our missions, because we're talking about the church worldwide, and we're talking about the church in our community, because there's missions to both. Now, this week, we're focused on Venezuela. And want to say hi to everybody in Venezuela. We love you. And we're so glad that through Jesus Christ, we share unity. And last week we focused on Honduras. And the week before that was Cross and Crown. And we love everyone. Because Jesus Christ unites us. And how does he do that? Well, what, what is unity? Let's, let's just start there. Unity can only happen and will only happen because of Jesus. It's not going to happen any other way. There may be some temporary agreements. There may be some people coming together in little pockets here and there in culture and calling it unity. But unity is all about Jesus. Jesus came to this earth and he died on a cross. He overcame death and he's in heaven at the right hand of God and he's going to come back someday and judge the world and through our faith in Jesus Christ it unites us in a way that nothing else can look we are all broken every one of us is broken and flawed and everybody in the world is broken and flawed and we all have the same needs all of us want something that matters 
we're looking for a life that makes sense. We want a, a good living. We want good things for our kids. I mean, we, we aspire for a lot of the same things. The same basic needs are the same. The, the needs are not the issue. The brokenness is not the issue. What the church has is a solution to the brokenness. That's what unites us. The solution to the brokenness is what unites us because that's found in Jesus Christ. And I'm so excited about what we're going to talk about this morning. In fact, I'm going to have to kind of make sure that I stay focused. I make it too excited and try to go off some rabbit trails. So y'all keep me focused. The focus has got to stay on Jesus. So keep me focused. Jesus, when he was about to go to the cross, was in the Garden of Gethsemane praying in John chapter 17. And I believe it's in verse 21. He said, Father, may they be one. May they be united as you and I are one. Such an incredible thing to pray because he's talking about us, those who would believe in the future, the, us today. May we be one. Well, how can we fulfill that prayer of Jesus and be one? Well, let me tell you how it's not going to happen, okay? And I'll illustrate this with something that I love. I am a smoothie aficionado. At least I, I think so. I love the smoothies that I make. And I'm able to put all kinds of healthy stuff into this Vitamix and create something that is absolutely delicious. So here's, here's how I think the world thinks of unity. They think of it as a smoothie. It's just a big love smoothie. We, we just want to, we want to put in some, let's start with love. Put a little love in there. <clears throat> Going to make this delicious smoothie. Got to put a little, little tolerance in there. We, ooh, got to be real careful now. We sure don't want to offend you. So put some tolerance in there. And let's see, ooh, let's make it really good. Let's, let's put some new theology in there. Because, you know, the, the Bible is a little too pointed on some things, and it kind of interrupts some of the social norms, if you know what I mean. Um, some of the, the things sexually today that people want to be able to do, and they don't want anybody telling them that they can't do it. They want to do what they want, and they don't want Jesus standing in the way. And so we got to reinterpret that. We need some new theology. We need someone to help the Bible conform to us. Hey, put that in there. It makes it better. And let, let's, in fact, let's just try to make anything, oh, anything that's going to make us feel good. Oh, yeah. Put that in there. How about a piece of pizza? Yeah, we like pizza. We, we're, we're making a, a, a blend here of everything that makes us feel good. And we're eliminating anything that would prevent us from doing what we want. And so really this unity that the world creates is all based on us and what we can do. I mean, do you look at any effort today to create unity in our culture? And it, some of them are good. Some of the aspirations and goals, and, and some of you, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to come at you too hard here. I just want you to think. What is the unity you're trying to create? What is the progress you're trying to create in any area of your life based on? What, what's it fundamentally rooted in? If it's fundamentally rooted in me having an outcome that I want based on what I do, then I'm going to get this smoothie that makes the world feel real good. It might make me feel real good. But here's the flaw in this analogy. You see, the blender is really Jesus. He's the one that's making unity. Unity can only come at the cross. So when we put ourselves in to Jesus and submit ourselves to Jesus and blend this all around and work it all around and let me be careful here. Let's blend it all around. Here, here's what we're going to get. Mm -hmm. Jesus just made a smoothie, and guess what it looks like? It looks like love. It looks like the kind of love that Jesus initiates. Not the kind of love that initiates from me 
and my perspective. Let me give you an example. I was talking to somebody recently who was having a very difficult time accepting the fact that God could forgive them because in their mind, they're thinking that forgiveness happens the way humans forgive. And I have a hard time, they're thinking, forgiving certain people. And so if I struggle to forgive, then God probably struggles to forgive me. And that's a total misunderstanding of the character of God and how much he loves us. And a total misunderstanding of the reason Jesus went to the cross. So the issue is in here. I've got to allow this to be renewed and changed and conformed to Jesus. That's the, the unity comes as we strive and work together to become like Jesus. And look, we're, we're going we're gonna to all be flawed and we're going to be going at different paces. But in my heart, I know that this is the solution. The solution is not found in the world. It's not found in government. It's not found in some new theologian. It's not found in the latest TED Talk. or in, And some of these things may be good, and we may get some value from them. But the only thing that will satisfy and bring what we're really looking for is found in Jesus. That's the point. Unity is found in Jesus. It's not found in all the efforts that come us and the world. Now, the scripture that I want us to focus on this morning is in Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. So if you want to look it up on your Bible app, it's in the New Testament. If you have your Bible, you know, sing the little song, Galatians and Ephesians. You know, when you get there, you'll... Ephesians chapter 1. I want to start in, and we're going to look, I'm going to read three through eight, and I'm going to come back to verse three because I want to focus on that. The thing that really brings us unity, oftentimes we don't even know that we have and are not even aware that these things are available to us. So I want to make sure that you're aware of the things you have that bring unity in Christ and how God's wanting to take those things and allow you to become a unifier in Jesus. Okay, let's read together. Starting in verse 3, Ephesians 1. All praise to God. We could, we could just spend a lot of time on that. All praise to God in everything. All praise to God. Because of what he's done for us, all praise to God. Transcending all circumstances. When things are good, when things are bad, all praise to God because he's worthy. Jesus is worthy of our praise. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. We're going to come back to that. Let's just keep reading. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. That's just hard to even grasp that before God even made the world, he had you in mind. He wanted you to have a relationship with him and he knew it was going to cost him his son and he did that anyway. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family. You have full rights as a child of God. Isn't that amazing? That, this is part of the spiritual blessings he's talking about, by the way. And he's bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. <laughs> it gave God great pleasure to be able to do what was necessary for you to have a relationship with him. So that the righteousness of Jesus, the goodness of Jesus, the perfectness of Jesus could be attributed to you and to me. Just incredible. This is where our unity comes from, folks. Understanding these truths, getting in the word, digging deep and letting the roots of Jesus and the truth of Jesus grow within us. That's what's going to unify us. So let's keep going. Let's jump in. So we praise God for the glorious grace he's poured out on us who belong to his dear son. Amen. Thank you, God, for the grace that you give us because I'm not worthy. We don't deserve it. Yet we still have it. He's so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. 
It just keeps going. The good news just continues. He showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. And that's what we need. We need some wisdom and understanding. So let's go back to the verse 3. Talk about these spiritual blessings. Those, those are the things that we need to be aware of that we have because those are the things that are going to empower us to stay unified and to show the world how to meet their needs. So let's just start with salvation. Let's, let's say this is your cup. This is your cup. This is my cup of coffee. But this is just metaphorically our cup, and God wants to fill our cup. He's filled it with salvation through Jesus Christ. That's one of our spiritual blessings. And through that salvation, we have hope. Even in the midst of this horrible situation with my dad, knowing that he's going to pass, my dad is full of hope. I heard it said this way, that when you come to Christ, you just packed your bags for eternity. You got your suitcase. And the rest of your life is filling that suitcase up in preparation for being with Jesus. Now, none of us want to die, but we know that's a part of life. And when it comes, we have hope. And you see, that's what the world's looking for. We're broken, they're broken, but we have hope. We have peace. We have joy. God's filled our cup with these spiritual blessings. <clears throat> And along with that, we have the fruits of the Spirit. God's empowered us through the Holy Spirit to be able to do things for each other that keep us unified. And that's what I really want us to end with. Now, here's, here's the practical application of this. I mean, what, what is your calling? What are, you, what are you supposed to be doing right now in terms of your role in the kingdom? Well, whatever season of life you're in right now, you just need to be faithful to that season of life. Like I'm 55 years old and I've got a father who's in the process of passing away. Guess where I am? I'm at this house honoring him, helping my mom because that's what I need to be faithful to right now. If you're a mom with young kids, God's calling you to be faithful to them. And guess what? He's empowered you with the ability to do that these fruits of the Spirit, these spiritual blessings, the seeds of patience, of kindness, of love, of everything you need is in your cup. But in order for those things to flourish, we've got to remain focused on the source. So I've got to be filling myself with things like the scripture we read this morning. I've got to counter all the lies that I've accumulated in my life, like the way I see myself, my insecurities, uh, some of us have a tendency to be critical and always see the flaws of others. I struggle with that sometimes. And so the only way I'm going to counter that is not on my own power, but by filling myself more with these spiritual blessings in Jesus. That's what's unifying us because our brothers and sisters in Venezuela, they're doing the same thing. Our, our brothers and sisters at the Cross and Crown. I was talking to Paul and Drew uh, this past week, and, and they told me that uh, they're doing everything they can to, to share Jesus in a very difficult situation there because you have inequality, uh, you have racism, you have all the things that, that we struggle with too, but it, it's really dealt with there at, at a different level. And they're just trying to show that through Jesus, there's the solution. You see, they're trying to do the same thing that everybody's doing. That's what we're doing. That's what the church is doing worldwide, is telling the world, hey, your inequality, the issues in your life, uh, dealing with poverty, dealing with um, marital issues, dealing with any struggle, dealing with depression, in the midst of any situation, dealing, dealing with a, a health issue, uh, the loss of someone that you love, all the solutions and the things that unite us are found in Jesus Christ. Let me go back and read verse 3 again and make sure we, we have this. By the way, before I read it, is there any question? This is where the unity is found. You can try to find unity in a cause. You can try to find it. You can think it's going to come through government, some new program, some 
and maybe these things help a little bit. I don't know. But the ultimate solution is only found in Jesus. <clears throat> and here's how Paul says it. All praise to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms, the salvation, the peace, the joy, the hope, the fruits of the Spirit, the, the one another, the community and relationships that we share together because of our faith in Christ. All these things that we can't necessarily touch, but that we have, we have these because we are united with Christ, the unity that we crave and desire is found because we all have faith in Jesus Christ. Oh, how badly I wish we could just wave a magic wand and the world would just all love each other. Racism would end, injustice would end, inequality would end depression would end, all marriages would be healed, all sickness would be healed, no one would have to die. You know what I'm describing? I'm describing the place that we're going to be someday. And that's what unites us. We're all looking forward to being together in this perfect environment. But there's only one ticket, and it comes to the cross of Jesus. This, this is what unites us. So look, let me encourage you. Don't evaluate yourself on what you're doing. Like, I'm not doing enough. I could do better. I could do better. Okay, that, that's fine. We, we want to improve. Try to say, how can I draw closer to Jesus? What can I do today so that I am closer to Jesus. I'm more in love with Jesus. Because the more you're in love with Jesus, you're going to be a better mom. You're going to be a better wife, a better husband. You're going to be a college student. You're going to be better because you love Jesus. High school, middle school students, kids, your life is better when you love Jesus more. That doesn't mean circumstances are going to go away and all your problems are going to be solved. It just means you're going to know the solution and where to go to find the satisfaction you need because you're going to find hope, joy, peace, love, kindness, everything you need. Your cup's going to be full with the spiritual blessings that Jesus has to offer. That's what unites us. Oh, don't you love Jesus? But let me, let me say a prayer and then we'll just uh, move on from here. God, thank you. Thank you for what you've done for us in Jesus. And God, I know there's a lot of things going on in our lives right now. Um, some things that, quite frankly, are very frustrating and don't make sense to some people. Um, they're discouraged. And God, I, I'm, I'm praying that through the power of Jesus, you'll give them the hope and the peace and the joy that you promised. Because that's the only source to renew our lives, to renew our hearts, is through Jesus. So God... May we be what Jesus prayed for in that garden. One, as Jesus and the Father are one. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day. And remember, we're unified because of the cross of Jesus. Day by day, you reveal your love to We've come to the portion of our service where we celebrate communion together. We take this time weekly 
to refocus on Christ's sacrifice for us. And we symbolically eat the bread and drink the wine that represent his broken body and his blood. For most of us, this is a routine event. This is a normal part of our week. But if you look at this ceremony from an outsider's perspective, you might be struck by how strange it is. We are eating and drinking the body and the blood of our sacrificed God. This might seem odd at best and maybe disturbing at worst. But to those of us who are in Christ Jesus, we recognize how profound this really is uh, and how life-changing of a ceremony it is. The last two weeks, I've really enjoyed Cleet Ross's sermons. Uh, I've enjoyed them because he's citing a lot of my favorite authors. He started off with J.R.R. Tolkien, the writer of The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, some of my favorite stories. But last week, he referenced a man named Thomas Merton. I was introduced to Merton a couple of years ago, and since then, he's become one of my favorite religious authors. Reading Merton feels like swimming in deep waters. Uh, I like Merton so much that he's actually on my favorite coffee cup. As you can see, if he had just grown a beard, he would have been a really good looking guy. On the other side of this cup is the fragment of a quote. And the full quote reads, love is our true destiny. We do not find the meaning of life by ourselves alone. We find it with another. Now, I don't know about you, but I see a lot of profundity in this quote. and I think it's worth dwelling on. There's obviously a lot of ways to interpret this quote. We find meaning in all of our different relationships with each other. I find meaning as a father to my children. I find meaning as a husband to my wife. I find meaning being a member of the church and celebrating communion with each other, um, with you each week. Uh, this is not something we're meant to do in isolation all of the time. We do it together, even if we're physically separated. But I think the most profound way to interpret this, of course, is that we find our meaning in the person of Christ Jesus. Of course, as you know, God is love. And when we celebrate this supper, this mystery, we are reminded of the most beautiful expression of love that the world has ever known. When Christ took our sins on himself and allowed himself to be brutally murdered so that we could live, we remember what Christ said, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. But there's a little more to it. Remember, we take and eat his body and drink his blood. We take him into our physical bodies and he becomes a part of us as we are becoming a part of him. Remember, we are striving to become more and more like Jesus. We want to carry our cross and follow after him, demonstrating to the world how his love has transformed us and how we are being transformed like him. That transformation is our destiny. And I think this last year has provided all of us with ample opportunities to demonstrate the greatest love for each other. This is a time of great trials, which calls for great love and great sacrifice. So I want you to remember this as we partake of the communion together, whether you're in person at the building or like me at home with your family. And uh, dwell on these words that love is our true destiny. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for his love for us. And we ask that you help us to become more and more like him each day. Please bless this communion as we partake of it. Please forgive us of our sins. and Help us to do better as we become more and more like your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Before we pray for the offering, I just want to take one more chance to remind you that two weeks from today, March 7th, is Mission Sunday. 
everything that you put into the offering on that day will be put towards our missions support for the 2021 fiscal year. Uh, of course, you can donate online and you can even fill out a digital pledge card. All of that can be found on the New Hope Church of Christ website. Let's pray for our offering. Lord, I want to pray over this offering today. I pray that you will bless not only the funds, but that you will bless our church leadership with wisdom, discretion, shrewdness, and kindness as they seek to, to lead us and to use these funds as best as they can. What I ask for each one of us that you give us open giving hearts, hearts filled with gratitude, hearts to know how much we have been given and how much we can give in return. We pray this in your son's holy name. Amen. In us today, I pray that you have been blessed and encouraged by the time we've spent together worshiping our Lord and Savior. Encouragement is very important, especially in difficult times. I'd like to share with you something that's been a great source of encouragement to me. Almost since the inception of New Hope, there have been a group of men who have met every Tuesday morning to study the Bible. That event has the catchy name, Tuesday Morning Men's Bible Study. We even called it that when we met on Thursday evenings for a brief period. And that event, or more specifically, the men who participate, participate in that event have been a great encouragement to me over that time period. We function very much like a small group, like many of you are involved in with the pillars of fellowship, Bible study, and prayer. We even have our inside jokes with terms like PhD and Zima and smart people. I don't even ask, I can't tell you what those are, but you can visit us on Tuesday morning. Knowing that there is a specific group of men out there who are striving to be made into the image of our Savior, who struggle and fail at times just like I do, but persist in that calling, is a great encouragement to me. If that is something that would bless you or something you would be interested in, call, contact Bob Peterson or myself or really anyone at the church for Zoom meeting information. You would be welcome. Let's pray together. Holy Father, we're so thankful for you and for the provision that you make for us in every way, most especially for the provision that we have of salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ, and for his willingness to be obedient to you, Father, and make that sacrifice for us. We thank you for your provision of community through the church, Father, and just what a great blessing that is. I thank you for the men that encourage me for the com camaraderie and fellowship we have as we work together for your kingdom purposes, Father. And I pray you just continue to bless us, that we will continue to be encouraged to be your people in each and every situation. Father, we have those on our hearts and minds today that we know are in need of your healing power. Father, we lift them up in our minds and just lay them at, the, at your feet, Father, and just ask you to bless them. Father, we pray that throughout this coming week that we will be your people and your lights in the universe around us, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That I wasn't going to tell anybody, but I could keep it to myself. Could keep it to myself. Could keep it to myself. That I wasn't going to tell anybody, but I could keep it to myself. What the Lord has.
keep it talking. I'll keep it singing and I'll keep it shouting what the Lord has done for me, for me. Said I wasn't gonna shout about it, but I couldn't keep it to myself. No, I couldn't keep it to myself. No, I Yeah. 